Sorry, the candy shop's closed. Oh, and I wanted some candy. I'm sorry. So we're at the last couple chapters, five chapters, of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. For Tuesday, this is Ray. And I'm Karina. So Karina, we're going to talk about the last chapters, 13 uh, through the end, which is chapter 17. It was a lot to read. But you know what? It's great. The book's over, and it came to a nice conclusion, and a lot of exciting things happened in these chapters. We won't be able to go through each one of them, but we can talk about something that's I've been thinking about is, gosh, it seems like Harry Potter always gets himself into trouble, and it seems like he's looking for it, but it might be because he's interested in helping other people. So not only does he win the Quidditch match, but he also, in the next chapter after that one, he goes to Dumbledore, or not Dumbledore, Hagrid, and they discover that Hagrid has what? A dragon. An illegal dragon. Right. Mwah. And we find out later that in the chapters that that was one that um, he got from a mystery uh, person down at the pub. But Harry gets himself involved in helping Hagrid get rid of this dragon. And that got him in a lot of trouble. Oh yeah, he got detention. What? He got detention. Hermione got detention. Malfoy got detention. And where did they go when they served their detention? They're forbidden forest and each of them had to lose 50 points from Gryffindor. Right. So, which they weren't very happy about. And when they're in the forest, they, which I thought was an interesting punishment to go into a very dangerous place, but it turned out you know, very interesting for the story because that's where they, he actually came across Voldemort with the unicorns. But again, Harry found himself into trouble because he found the unicorn that someone was there, which was Coral, we find out, was drinking the unicorn blood. So Harry always seems to be in the middle of trouble. And I think there's even in one part of one of these chapters where after he gets punished in the 150 points, I don't remember where it was exactly, but he promises that to himself that he, he won't, won't ever be, be in any more trouble and that he won't be interested in anything else. Yeah, and he won't be tempted again. And of course, what happens? He does it again. He gets tempted again. And one of the things that tempts him is that he figures out that um, the dragon or that uh, Hagrid may have said something about getting by Fluffy to the guy who had the uh, gave him the dragon. Mm. He said that to get through the trap door with the three-headed dog, all I have to do to Fluffy is just play some music and he'll fall right asleep. Yeah, so it makes me wonder that if it wasn't Harry Potter who was the baby, if it was someone else that whose parents de uh, defied Voldemort, and got killed. And, and got then... so like if it was Ron, or Neville, or someone like that, how the story would be different. Who may not have the same character traits mm. as Harry. But if it was Ron's parents who got killed. Yeah. Then does that well? If, well, that is if um, Ron got killed when he was a baby. That means he would never have a little sister. Too bad, for him. Yeah. So what you know, I'm thinking about this is that. All these factors have to come together, together together, to make Harry, like we said last time, a hero. But also, if he wasn't interested, he could just be overwhelmed by the school and not worry about all these other things. But he's got this inside character that is overwhelming, that he has to help, and that he has to fight evil. Because you remember at the very, very end, when they're in the uh, chamber, not the chamber, where this, the mirror is and Voldemort's there, is he basically says, I can't let you win. You know, I, you're evil, and I won't let evil win. And the way the mirror was set up was, the way Dumbledore set it up was that the rock or stone would be revealed only to someone who didn't want it, but who just wanted to find it. And he was trying to find it so that uh, he didn't want to use it, but so that Voldemort couldn't use it or anyone else couldn't use it for evil purposes. So... He really has this drive to, to seems to help and to defeat evil. Now I don't know if he was if it was because his parents are that way and uh, he inherited that, or he just is naturally that way. 
So that's an important thing. So Karina, as I was reading th this particular book, um, a lot of things kind of struck me that were interesting, and we can't talk about all of those things, but one of the things is that there's a lot of reference and a lot of scenes about food, feasts, mm -hmm. and candy. And candy is all throughout this, all different kinds of candy. And one of my favorites, I think, is this one, which was Dumbledore's as well, which is lemon, lemon rounds. And I'm going to try one because I think the candy store is now open. But in the beginning um, of the book, when Harry gets all this money and gold on the on the train, what does he do? He spends it on candy, and there's also jelly beans that you can get that have every single flavor. Now I'm going to be daring to see which flavor this is. That's earwax. Ew. Yeah. Let's try another one. Right Why there. would anyone have earwax candy? <coughs> that was that was that was throw up. That was really disgusting. Oh, gross. Okay. I'm gonna one try one more. Let's see what I have. Let's see. Let's try this one. Mmm. Mint. You finally mm. get a normal one. So you get all this. Harry buys not just some candy on the train, he buys a whole cart of candy and goodies. And I know he was just a young boy and had money. But then there's food through all out, and food is such an important thing. Um, for everybody, it, they come together to eat. Um, all the kids come together for their common meals. And at the very, very end, when Harry's in the hospital, he has candy all around him. And mm, and he has chocolate frogs that mm -hmm. they have like some kind of enchantment, which causes them to, causes them to go ribbit, ribbit and hop around. I would love to have a chocolate frog. <laughs> I'd eat it. Mm -hmm. I don't know what a chocolate frog would taste like. I hope it wouldn't taste like chocolate covered chicken. Mm. Ew. <laughs> anyway, since they say frog legs taste like chicken. And at the end, he's sitting there in his bed on the hospital with Dumbledore, and they're sharing candy. And sharing food, and particularly candy, is something that people like to do uh, together. And it, uh, it can create a bond can create a common occurrence or just a way to relax and get to know each other. So I don't know if there's more candy and food references in the rest of these books, but from uh, a development of a story, the availability of food uh, is uh, just a, a great way to share community and to, to grow together. So that's all we had for now for today on uh, these exciting chapters. We're glad that Voldemort got defeated in this one. But what I wonder is, I'll leave this question, is where did Voldemort go? And is he going to come back? All right. Well, that's it for now uh, for, for this chapter book, or this set of chapters. And join us next week when we'll start the next book. Thank you and enjoy your reading. Goodbye. Bye.